Once you have decided on the proper acquisition setting and set the pinhole size correctly, we're ready to start optimizing the channels. To do this, we're going to make sure that all of them are clicked and we are going to select one channel at a time by clicking on their names as shown here and click the live button. The live button will begin scanning the um, laser in the sample, uh, but it will only do it for the particular channel that's highlighted. Now, it is very typical that once you do this, uh, you will not see anything here. Now, there are multiple reasons for this. We might not be on the right display scale. We might not be in the right focal plane, and we might not have um, the display properly set up to see the signals for the given intensity that they have. So I'm going to uh, tackle with each of those issues one at a time. First, currently the, the image is being shown on a red scale where it can be hard to see things uh, if they're particularly dim. So I'm going to switch to a range indicator scale. On this scale, pixels that are very dim are shown in um, blue. Uh, pixels that are saturated, that have the maximum possible intensity, are shown in red. And everything in the middle is shown on a gray scale. So uh, in that display now, we can see things a little bit more clearly. Another thing I'm going to do is with this uh, panel, I'm going to adjust how the image looks without modifying how the image is being acquired. So to do that, I'm going to click on Best Fit, and that will just tweak how the image looks to us without really changing the data in the image. You can also uh, use min max. This typically makes things slightly dimmer. Um, it's best to use best fit if you have very small clusters of, of objects in your sample that are very bright, because best fit tends to ignore them and makes it easier to see the rest. If you still don't have an image that's bright enough to see things, you can go ahead and grab this handle here, drag it to the left, and that will make your image brighter. So a brief comment about what we're doing here and what this means. If you zoom into the image by using the scroll wheel, you'll see that the image is made up of pixels. And so for example, if I point to this particular pixel, if you look down here, it will report the X and Y position of that pixel along with a pixel value, which is an intensity. So that is how much, it's a number proportional to how much light reached the detector at the location represented by that pixel. And those numbers are on a scale that goes from 0 to 65,535. This image has about a quarter of a million pixels. And those pixels can be represented, their intensities rather can be represented in this histogram, where this is number of pixels on a log scale. And this is the intensity going from 0 to 65,000. So what we do when we manipulate this is change how pixels of different intensities look to us visually, but we're not changing the actual intensity values of the image. So when we optimize each channel, what are we trying to do? What we're trying is to get an image of good quality. Uh, so when we uh, describe quality here, uh, what we're really talking about is contrast. So how much noise is there in this, these objects that I care about? Um, that is one thing that we are trying to optimize. The other thing is we do not want the brightness of the pixels in this image to be saturated. We do not want them to be at the maximum possible intensity of 65,000. If they were, this is something that's bad enough that the software, when you're in range indicator mode, has a specific visual cue that indicates that a pixel is saturated, which is pixels show up as, as red. So let me show you what that looks like. So a range indicator. I'm just going to increase the digital gain to illustrate this issue. I'm going to go set. So you can see these pixels are saturated. If I hover on them, you will see at the bottom that they're reporting pixel values of 65,535. That means that they are at the maximum possible value. We don't want any pixels at the maximum possible value. Even if we're not measuring the pixel intensities, even if we're not interested in those, having a lot of pixels at that, um, at that level can lead to um, distortions in the visible morphology. Uh, and it will obviously distort any, any measurements that we try to make. And furthermore, it can damage the detector. So we really don't want any saturated pixels. 
what that translates to in practice is not only not having any pixels that are at the maximum possible intensity, but rather leaving a safety margin, or I should say, as in addition, leaving a safety margin so that we don't have any pixels brighter than about half of the dynamic range, which is between 30 and 40,000. So we really don't want pixels brighter than this because we risk saturation. Now, to avoid the risks of saturation, in addition to making sure none of our pixels are brighter than about the, this, this, um, this intensity, we're going to do the optimization on uh, a sample which is among the brighter ones. So if you have, for example, a case where you knocked down a protein and your control is that protein at native levels, you would set up the conditions to image that protein, not in the knockdown, but rather in the control where the levels are higher. That way, when you image all of your samples with the same settings, which is a necessary prerequisite to comparing them, um, none of them will be saturated. So that's kind of a hard limit that we have, that we really can't have the brightness go much beyond this because we risk saturation. But we, uh, in addition to sort of not going through that barrier, we do want to improve the quality of the image. And so what tools do we have to do that? So the main tool we have is the laser power. The greater the laser power, the brighter the image will be, the more bleaching or uh, you know, destruction of the fluorophore there will be, and the higher the quality. So let's illustrate this by changing the laser powers and seeing what happens. So if I go down, for example, to a laser power of 0.12%, this got much dimmer. This histogram shifted to the left. Now I can bring up the visual brightness again by hitting best fit. And you can see that even though the visual brightness of this is similar to the four, clearly the quality is much worse. So let's start increasing the laser by factors of two and seeing what happens. In each case, what you'll see is the image will get brighter, the quality will get better. Now, as we do this, we should see that the intensities, if we're increasing the laser by a factor of two, the intensities should also similarly increase by a factor of two. If they don't, that means your laser power is so high that all of the fluorophores are being excited and increasing laser power does not lead to a higher intensity. You want to avoid that situation because in that scenario, you can get a lot of bleaching. Um, so we're in this situation. This still doesn't look particularly good. So if you want to increase it further, that's then this number is about 0 0.5. I'm just going to increase it to 1% to make the numbers a little bit rounder. So you can see right now, that we're at about uh, you know 4,000 ish in our brightest pixels. If we increase this again, if we double it and hit best fit, we were at excuse me not 4,000. We were at 3,500. Now we're at about 7,000. And you can see several things. As I increase the laser, it gets brighter, and the signal quality gets better, but by a smaller and smaller amount. So this is very typical. Go here. You can see it doubled again, um, roughly there. Um, so you can see as you're doing this, it's getting better and better. But at a certain point, um, if we double it again, and we don't see uh, an increase in quality that's worth it, or we see that the signal starts to fade, or we exceed um, the range that we have here, so we exceed sort of the, the middle of the dynamic range, therefore risking saturation, we can't do, uh, we can't increase the laser further. Another thing I'd like to illustrate is that um, we can't go beyond, for the 561, 5%. You'll see if I try to double this to 8, it won't let me. It'll only go to 5. And the reason is we don't have the high intensity laser range on. If you want higher laser powers, then 5, 5, I think 4, and 3.5, and you have to turn on the high intensity laser range. When you do that, you will not be able to use laser intensity ranges below 0.2%, and this applies to all of the channels. So to continue with this exercise, if we go to 8% and I go to live, you'll see that at this point, we are getting close to risking saturation, and the increase in quality was not very dramatic. So it's probably not worth it for this particular channel to increase the laser power further. Now. Um, one thing that um, you should keep in mind, and this is different between the LSM 900 called Lupin and the LSM 900 called Tonks, is the setting of the digital gain. 
On Tonks, by default, this is set to 0 0.4, and the reasons for this are a bit complicated, but they have to do with the way these systems are calibrated. And by setting it at 0.4, this makes it very similar to our other older LSM 900 called Lupin. Um, one thing that uh, the digital gain can be used for, uh, if you are increasing the laser and running out of room, as it were, to increase it further, is you can lower the digital gain, and this will multiply all the values in your image by whatever this number is. And so, for example, if we were using a digital gain of 1 here, and I went to Live, you could see that there are very, very bright pixels. And so this violates our rule of being close to saturation. So if you were in this scenario, you could reduce the digital gain. And that would give you more room to increase the laser power without saturating. So this is a way of generating more room to, again, increase the laser power without risking intensity saturation. It is something that you can do more on the LSM 900 Lupin, where the default gain is 1, and less so on the LSM 900 Tonks, where the default digital gain is 0.4, and you can only reduce it to 0.3. I would not recommend you uh, increase the digital gain, because that will only reduce your dynamic range. So keep it at whatever the default is for your particular system, and lower it if needed to make more room. I would also recommend that you don't change the master gain. Uh, if you increase it, this does not result uh, in increased quality of the image. It just results in a brighter image. And therefore, it also reduces the range you have to work with for the laser power. So I would just keep it at 500. Finally, if you have a lot of blue pixels, uh, these are usually uh, not a problem. But if you do have a lot of them, you can increase the digital offset by multiples of 100 until you get rid of them. Uh, and so that means that you uh, don't have any pixels that are very close to 0 or at 0. Um, so with that, we have a nice image. This is probably overkill. We don't need 4, as will be evidence. When, excuse me, we don't need 8, as will be evidence that when we go to 4, it doesn't change that much. Um, and so with all of those manipulations that we made, we've adjusted the, the imaging conditions for one of the channels, the 594. So let's now adjust them for the others. I'm going to turn off high intensity laser range and go to the 488, go to live. Um, I'm going to focus this uh, clearly like the where this is brightest is not where the other's brightest. I'm going to go click control and move the scroll wheel until I'm in the brightest plane. And you can see here um, that the quality is, is, is pretty good. Um, and I don't have a lot of room to increase the laser power. I'm, I'm at around 15,000, so maybe I can double it. Uh, when I do so, I go up to around 30,000, but I don't really have room to do much more. If I wanted to, I'm on recording this video on loop, and I could reduce the digital gain to 0 0.3, and that would give me a little bit more room to increase uh, the laser power without saturating or risking saturation. Now you can see that in this particular case, that does not seem to really be worth it. Uh, I didn't get a noticeable improvement in quality, uh, but it is something that in some circumstances could be very useful. I'm going to go back to 1.4. I'm going to take the digital gain back to 0 0.4, and then switch to DAPI and do a final optimization here. So you can see in this case, we have nuclei that are very bright, just the default conditions are already uh, at our sort of our limit for saturation. So and this is a good option for reducing the digital gain and maybe increasing um, this a little bit um, until uh, we have a nice quality image. So once we've, um, we've uh, adjusted things for each of the channels, uh, we can take a snap and see how um, things look when we have all channels overlaid. And if we hit best fit, it will adjust uh, the display setting so that we can see what our starting point is.